Water, water everywhere. What are you supposed to do when a sump pump failure and a hurricane leave two inches of water everywhere in your basement? Well, that was my family's dilemma four months ago when a hurricane did just that to my house. What you have to do is move fast because time plus moisture equals mold. So I want you to subscribe too while you're here because I'm going to have a lot more videos sharing how we did this basement renovation and how we saved thousands of dollars by doing it ourselves. But the first step was the water remediation after the storm hit. So let's dive into that dilemma. So the first thing to do after the storm was to get the water out of the basement. So you could hire a remediation company to come in and do all of this for you. But because there was so much damage in the area and so many homes that needed attention, we decided to do it ourselves. And we saved a fortune because the insurance company allotted us $1,700 for the man hours of work that we put in to the uh, water cleanup. And we were able to use that money for other new things for the basement renovation. So who was my crew? Yes, I am a workhorse, so I busted my butt for 17 hours, but I also had my husband, my son, and a friend who came over and gave us a hand. So we were able to get all of the carpet, the pad, and the water picked up and out of our house by the end of the day. And I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about my new friend, Hildy. Hildy is a 1969 industrial shop vac, and this gal, was my best friend. It worked so hard. It had incredible suction and I was able to get all of the water cleaned up. But here's how you have to work. The extraction is the key. You got to get the moisture out of the carpet so that you can roll it up and carry it out. So that was the first step was to extract water from certain areas of the carpet. Then we would cut it into four foot sections so we could roll it up and take it out. But after we rolled it up, it still had water stuck in it. So we would roll the sections up and we would put them vertically into a tall trash can and let all the water drain out over a few minutes. And then we would take the hose from Hildy and suck all of the excess water out of the bottom of the trash can. So we got rid of more water, we made the rolled up section of carpet a little bit lighter and we could carry it up in the bucket, AKA the trash can, without dripping water through the house. If you don't have a friend that's able to drop Hildy off at your house in a moment's notice, you may want to borrow, buy, or rent a strong shop vac. It doesn't need to be an industrial size. I was just lucky to have access to one. Now, I don't want to forget to talk about PPE, which is the personal protective gear. It's really important that you do um, wear the appropriate clothing for the project. So in this case, um, we had dirty clothes on. I didn't care how dirty I got. I had on good shoes so I wouldn't be slipping on the wet floors. And um, you can certainly wear gloves. As the progress moved on and we were ripping out the drywall and the baseboards, eyewear and a mask because of the dust from the drywall destruction. So here is a tip for you. As much as that sump pump was your foe when it stopped functioning and overflowed, it will be your friend when you have a shop vac full of water to dispose of. We rolled Hildy over to the sump pump once the power was restored and the sump pump was working, and we would dump the water right into the sump pump so we didn't have to carry buckets of water upstairs to dispose of. But here's an inside tip. We used an old colander inside the well of the shop vac to scoop up any carpet fuzz and gunk or any other debris that made its way in so that it didn't clog the sump pump in the future. And definitely make sure that you cut your carpet and padding into four foot sections before you roll it up because that is typically what trash haulers will accept. So you wanna make sure that it is done ahead of time and you're not trying to cut it in the driveway later. And we learned that the hard way because we cut a few sections too big. So we had to cut it down outside. So we just continued to work rolling up first the carpet section and then the padding underneath. So you wanna find out from your trash hauler what the fee is. For us, all of that bulk pickup cost us $65. So the $1,700 that the insurance company allotted we only spent 65. Step two was getting rid of the trim work and the drywall. Now, this honestly was 
just as much work. We used um, a pry bar to pull off all of the baseboards, and in our case, we had beadboard paneling. So all of the beadboard paneling and its chair rail had to come off because the water damage um, was going to climb up the wall. So we had about three to six inches of damage behind the actual beadboard. Now, once all of that was pulled off, we broke it into sections. We would cut the baseboards into four foot or less sections, sometimes three feet. We would cut the uh, beadboard into half, so it was only two foot by four foot sections, so it would fit in the trash can. And then I used my oscillating tool to cut my drywall right above where the uh, beadboard paneling had been glued. And then we were able to take off the drywall sections. And that kind of got broken up into random pieces. But with contractor bags, we were able to put all of this debris into trash bags and dispose of it in our regular trash. So bear in mind, you could call for a dumpster. Um, typical dumpster is anywhere from four to six hundred dollars, um, even for the smaller size ones. And you know, you'll have it there for days, you know, to put your all your debris into. By using the durable contractor grade trash bags, we were able to bag up all of our debris. We like I said, cut it down to a manageable size, it fit into bags, and we were able over about two weeks to take all of the trash bags out. And I also asked my neighbors if they minded if I put one or two black bags next to their trash cans, and they said no problem. So we were able to get rid of it pretty quickly with no added fees. So the other piece is, what do you do if you do find some mold? In our case, we had very little mold growth on a few of the um, studs that were behind the beadboard. So I got mold control. It's a great product. Um, it did not have a strong odor. You spray it on, you scrub it in, you wipe it off and let it dry. So we did that and let that um, air out and it was probably um, a good two to four weeks before we were even ready to start putting new drywall up. So everything was really dry and I knew that there were no active mold growth areas. So throughout this whole process, we had fans, we had the dehumidifier going, we had an air purifier, and we made sure that we were clearing the air as much as possible. And we were wearing masks when we were down here working on um, the drywall with all the dirt and the dust and possibly mold spores. So that's important. And lastly, when all of the uh, demo work was done and the bulk of the mess was over, I went and changed my air filter. So remediation was about water, it was about damaged goods, it was about mold, and it was about air quality. Doing it yourself can truly save you a lot of money. Yes, you need to have the skills, you need to be willing to put in the hours of blood, sweat, and tears, but we were able to save that $1,600 so we could put it towards something else. And in this case, we put it towards a new sectional, which is upstairs, while the older one came down. All of these skills that I used in this basement renovation are just the kinds of things that I teach in my DIY program for women. Be your own handy woman. And if you'd like to learn more about that, make sure you click this link above. You'll get on our newsletter and I'll be sending you more info about it. So make sure you subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on all of the tips and tricks that I'm sharing on how to remodel a basement on a budget because it is very doable. And at the end, I'll give you guys a full grand tour of our basement remodel.